Hello, Tom here once again. Uh, today I want to talk about this. This is my new bike. Well, it's not new, it's new to me. It's a GPZ 305. Um, an up, slightly unusual bike. Um, and the reasons for me buying this are that the, the price of diesel at the moment is astronomical uh, due to events going on around the world. And I sold my car because it was getting too much to, uh, to run it. Uh, and I already had the Royal Enfield and I wanted to get something to commute to work on and, uh, and this met the, uh, met the criteria. Um, it was an expensive bike, uh, it's actually quite an old bike, it's a 1994 model but it's only done about 24,000 miles and so I, I took a chance on it. The gentleman I bought it off has uh, lovingly maintained it and it's, uh, it's in really good condition for the age. And and I know that there's not a lot of content on YouTube about the GPZ 305. Um, if you do search for this bike online, you will find that a lot of the articles talk about um, how bad a bike it is, um, a lot of negative articles. Um, I didn't really look at those. I mean, I, I looked at them and I read them, but I thought I'd make my own uh, mind up. Uh, so I took a chance on the GPZ, and I have to say I'm actually quite happy with it. So. I'm going to spin the camera around in a second and I'm going to show you the bike itself. Uh, as I say, there's not that much stuff on YouTube about the GPZ, not in a, in a positive light anyway, uh, but I have found it to be quite an enjoyable bike to ride. And in the short time I've owned it, I've had approximately zero issues with it and, uh, and it's great as a little cheap to run commuter bike. So uh, let me spin the camera around and we'll have, a, we'll have a quick look. Okay then, here we are. This is the GPZ 305 belt drive. I will talk about that in a second in more detail but first of all just wanted to uh, give you a quick sort of look around the bike so at the front we've got these uh, twin discs very nice addition there I mean it's only a 305 cc bike so you probably don't need the twin discs my CB1100 had twin discs um, but they provide more than enough stopping power uh, these yellow details on the wheels are not standard I think the previous owner at some point painted the road riders uh, logo here and then painted these uh, these nuts here just to match I think it looks quite good to be honest uh, I'm not going to change it I'm just going to keep them as is for now uh, obviously when I get new tyres on it they'll disappear that yellow will disappear but for now it looks good uh, you've got this very kind of 80s style uh, decal kind of um, colour scheme going on here with the black and the orange and the red again I think it looks really nice um, so yeah, as I say, 305cc engine. I believe it is a 250 engine that's been bored out by Kawasaki to give it a little bit more uh, capacity. Um, it's not the fastest, and even though it's got six gears, the first three gears are absolutely pointless. They'll get you going, but you need to get to fourth really to actually get any speed up. Uh, here's the uh, sort of cockpit. Uh, I will put some video into this video, some video into this video of me riding the bike. Uh, you have got this big square, square headlight at the front. GPZ logo there. Uh, let's go around to the other side. Uh, so you can see from this video, I mean, hopefully, I, I picked up my iPod as opposed to my iPhone uh, by mistake, so that's why I'm recording it on my iPod. Hopefully, the video and the audio quality is up to standard. Uh, but you can see here, it's very clean. Um, again, it's a bike from 1994. Um, if you watch my other video on, on my previous Kawasaki, which was an ER5, that was a 1999 model, equally good condition bike so you can it just proves that these bikes can be you know maintained and look uh, look pretty amazing uh, there's somebody here in a car at the moment uh, so he's going past um, so yeah uh, now the interesting thing about this bike is this the final drive now as you can see here there is no chain there's no chain at all hopefully you can see that on this video uh, this is a little bit of better angle it's a belt it's a belt driven bike and it says it there, belt drive. And um, yeah, I believe Kawasaki's um, reasoning for this was that it was a, it was easier to maintain a belt than a chain. And uh, in all of the, the materials that came with the bike, I do have all the, the original materials with it, uh, posters and whatnot. Uh, they do say that it, it's uh, easier to maintain or has zero maintenance. Um, you can get these fairly cheap on eBay now, these chains or rather these, these belts, so that's quite cool. Um, and you will note as well that this side doesn't have the standard exhaust on it. Um, the stock exhaust for these bikes is a twin, but uh, somebody has put this, um, this aftermarket uh, Motad 
uh, exhaust on, so it's a two into one twin cylinder, two into one exhaust, and also got some nice crash bars on there. Uh, we'll just look at the cockpit here. You can see that it does have a speed limit on here of 120 miles an hour. I doubt it would do that. Um, I've, you know, it'll easily do the speed limit. Uh, you've got nice big turn signals here uh, and all of these uh, little indicators. So you've got neutral, high beam, and your kickstand when that's down. Um, but yeah, I mean, it's a really comfortable bike. You, you are leaning forward slightly because of these kind of clip-on handlebars or the clip-on style. Uh, the previous owner also put this on, which is like a cigarette lighter type, type thing with a, a, a USB connector. I'm not entirely sure what I'll use that for, but um, it's a nice to have, I suppose, if I ever wanted to put a, um, a mobile phone holder on here somewhere. Uh, but yeah, I mean, as a commuter, it's, uh, it's hard to fault, really, in the short time that I've owned it. Um, it does have a, a drum disc and a drum brake on the back, uh, but so far that's been more than adequate. Again, you know, twinned with the um, the double uh, discs up at the front, uh, it's more than adequate to stop a bike of this, uh, this power. Um, so yeah, I also do like this very retro style um, backlight as well. And it did come with a Givy uh, top box, so that was really cool uh, because you know uh, it's always good to have some um, some luggage. On your, uh, on your bike. So yeah, that's the uh, that's the GPZ 305. As I said, again for the third time, there's not a lot of stuff on on this bike on YouTube. Um, so hopefully this gives you just a little bit of an overview of what it looks like. And um, again, there'll be some there'll be some footage of me riding it cut into this video as well. Um, but yeah, the, the, the previous owner has really well maintained this bike, and I'm very happy with it. And it will um, be a, a great commuter for many. Well, I hope years to come. Um, so yeah, just my initial thoughts on the on the GPZ 305 belt drive. If you see one of these going cheap, in good condition, as good a condition as this, I would recommend picking it up because these are going to become classics, I think, in the future. Anyway, that's enough from me. Uh, thanks for watching and uh, some more footage of me uh, riding the thing now. Hello, welcome back. Here we are in the saddle of the mighty GPZ 305. 305cc's of pure power here in the nice sunny weather that we're having in the UK at the moment. It's been a long time coming. It's been uh, horrifically grey, rainy and wet for the probably the last sort of three or four months. So uh, we've got a nice bit of weather and uh, I thought it'd be good to just get in the saddle and show you how this uh, how this beast performs really so here we are just doing a uh, turn along in fourth gear and uh, now we've entered a faulty zone so hopefully you can see on the camera handles this with considerable ease hello mr biker nod So yeah, this is, uh, as I say, and I've repeated myself several times now, a 305cc bike. So imagine a 125, times that by two and add a little bit, and that's the kind of performance you're going to get. It's not a super bike by any means, uh, but it will do the uh, the speed limits in, uh, in most, well, I say most circumstances, all circumstances, because uh, obviously the speed limit here in the UK on the motorway is uh, 70 miles an hour, and uh, this bike will do 70 miles an hour quite comfortably. So here we are, 50 miles an hour now. Uh, watch out for anything around this corner before I uh, open her up a little bit so yeah 50 mile an hour at 6000 rpm easy easy I'm not sure how accurate that speedo is but it certainly feels like I'm doing 50 mile an hour lovely weather One of the things I forgot to mention in the early part of this video is that this bike has a, it's a carved bike, as I'm sure you'd be able to tell anyway, just due to the age. Uh, so it's got, um, yeah, it's a twin carb. And uh, because of that, it won't take new E10 fuel. So that's one of the negatives about this bike. It does, it does rely on the old uh, E5, which is uh, now known as super unleaded. 
which is even more expensive than it was anyway uh, but I suppose the the trade-off is that this tank is I think it's about is it about 12 litres worth of fuel in this tank I know it, it'll last forever I filled this bike up yesterday it cost me 12 pounds and uh, the needle on the speed on the fuel gauge hasn't actually moved uh, I've looked in the tank and it's still full to the brim and I've done about I'd say about 60 or 70 miles on it so far uh, so that's a bonus of the relatively small engine capacity obviously it's not as good as a 125 but the benefit of having a you know a, a double capacity engine of a 125 essentially a little bit more than double is that you get uh, the extra speed as well and acceleration so yeah it's comfortable sat in uh, in fourth gear at 30 miles an hour it does do it it'll do this all day uh, and one of the things i found about this bike as well is that because as i said in the earlier part of this video the first three gears are basically pointless it's like when you drive a hdv if anyone here listening to this has, has driven a, a truck um, the first load of gears they're, they're pretty pointless because they're just to get the the thing moving and that's the case here really um, it's literally just to get you moving so you need to like quickly sort of cycle through them to get any speed up but then once you get into fourth fifth and then sixth that's where you uh that's where you're sort of comfortable and uh, you can actually just sit in fourth at, uh, at 30 and then just wind it up to 50 or 60 in fourth so you don't even really need to change gear that much which is um quite cool obviously no slipper clutch just bear that in mind uh, no abs uh, so bear that in mind no mod cons at all really on this bike but that's what makes these older bikes fun there's no riding modes you just got to rely on your own skill and I think it's a lot more fun and do you know what this is going to sound really pretentious but I think I actually prefer riding this to my uh, Royal Enfield Interceptor the Interceptor is an amazing bike probably one of the best bikes I've ever owned but it's just so easy to ride whereas this is like it, it makes you work <laughs> you know you gotta you know you gotta rely on those uh, gear shifts when you want to get some speed up and it's just a bit of a bone shaker and that's what I like about it so yeah 65 there no problem I'm pretty confident this is A2 compatible as well so if you've got a restricted license and you see one of these and you want one you want a bike that's sort of unrestricted I know I mentioned in my last uh, oh that's something to not just to remind myself about as well um, the previous owner put this uh, indicator reminder alarm thing on this bike and I don't know if you could hear it there on the video obviously I'll be able to tell on the edit but it's really loud so if you're sat in traffic and you've got your indicator on people sort of you know they're looking around what's that noise it's me on my GPZ 35 <laughs> So if you ever see this bike in traffic and you can hear that beeping noise, you know it's me. Uh, just a little update to the to the video, I'll just cut in here. This was what was making the beeping noise. It's the indicator relay. As you can see, it's got a little hole on the bottom that is uh, a speaker. Uh, I've swapped this out for the one from my Royal Enfield just to see if that was the culprit making the, the beeping noise for the indication. And it was. So um, now I've uh, replaced this with the one from my uh, Royal Enfield, which you can see just up there. And uh, I've bought one off um, Amazon to replace it with. So when that turns up, I'll uh, pop it in there and we're, we're all good. Silent indicators. Who knew it would be such a, uh, a luxury? Uh, what was I saying? Yeah, um, when I got my license, when I had a restricted license, uh, I can only have a three, uh, 33 bhp bike back in sort of 2012, I think it was. Um, I ended up with a Suzuki Goose, uh, which was uh, unrestricted, but came under the 33 bhp limit that I was allowed. I'm pretty sure this would as well. No gear indicator on the dash, but um, obviously, you know, take the rough with a smooth. 
I think I've only ever had one bike with a gear changer on it. That was a CG125. I don't think they're very common, especially on um, these bikes with analogue dials. Right, I think I might just get on the motorway just to show um, how, ha how well it handles motorway speeds. Just for a... Uh, just for the hell of it, really. Is it going that way? Yep. All right. Okay. As you can see, hopefully here as well, pretty comfortable doing 70 miles an hour, no issues at all there. So yeah, that's the, uh, the GPZ305, I will uh, leave you now, uh, we'll just with some more footage without me speaking over it, and uh, enjoy.